camera turn around backwards. <laughs> I'm using my phone and I'm not used to using my phone. Y'all, Woo! what a night. What a night. And I mean, it was. I was looking at my neck. It looks weird. Anyway, y'all know I had that place removed out of my thyroid. And so I was looking, I was looking at it funny. Um, I'm so exhausted. I didn't go to bed till really late. Amy starts her job today. She had to get up and be at work by 5 a.m. She's working at my cousin's biscuit barn. And uh, so, you know how mamas are. I was like, she's got to be out of the bed at 5. And about every few minutes, I would raise up and look at the time. And raise up and look at the time. And finally, whew, I was just like, thank goodness it's time for her to be up. So I checked and she was up. Amy's always been one to just get right up in the morning. I've always been that too. I guess that she get, she gets that from me. Um, today, <laughs> our Bible study is going to be casting our care upon him. I've got to find my place, um, in the Bible. Just give me a minute. Um, I think it's 2 Peter. Whew. I was going to tell y'all that, um, I got contacted by a lady yesterday, and she works for ABC. Uh, family. It's a television. Uh, she was a television person. And she was wondering if I would be interested. My cat's here this morning. Um, I put her little bed right there, right next to us. And she really likes it. See her laying in it? But anyway, she asked me whether I'd be interested in being on a show um, where families compete against each other cooking to win $100,000. And, of course, your first thought is absolutely, but then you start thinking, hmm. Anyway, she, um, I called my brother because he was my first pick, my little brother. He said, heck, yeah, I'll do it. So, me and him, we would have to go all the way out to Los Angeles for three weeks in October through November if they pick us as a family. And so that means, well, I called my cousin because she would be my next pick. And she was like, I just don't know if I could do that, Timmy. I'm not a camera person, and I'll just have to pray about it and give you an answer tomorrow. So she went last night to do her Bible study before she goes to bed, and it was Dr. Stanley. And he was, his um, lesson was on how God gives us opportunities lots of times and we pass them up because we don't even realize he's the one giving us an opportunity. So that made her feel more confident about doing it. So uh, she said she would. And she's supposed to call me this morning and give me a photo of her. Because I've got to send them photos of the family group that I choose this morning sometime. Well, anyway, then I called one of my cousins. She's actually my second cousin because I've always just thought she was sweet and she has always been real good to watch my cooking show and uh, she can cook, you know. And uh, anyway, she's going to get back with me because, I mean, it's a, three weeks is a long time to leave your family and she's got a lot of responsibility. She takes care of three kids and her mom. Um that aren't even her children, but they're her grandchildren. Well, one of them, I think. Anyway, that's a lot of responsibility. Um, and then I asked Chris, I'm like, are you going to go with me? And he's, well, I'd like to. And I'm like, well, I don't know what we'd, we'd do with our teenagers, you know. I wish they could go. And, you know, May would actually be old enough to be on set. But May knows nothing about the kitchen. I couldn't put her in the contest. Um, I mean, it hurts her feelings, but I couldn't. And because uh, I would, you know, if I'm going to go do it, I'd like to try to win the money. And so uh, she said, uh, anyway, I don't know what we're going to do with our kids. I might have to get in and pop come stay with them for three weeks. Isn't that something? It's a big decision, y'all. 
So instead of worrying about it, like, of course, I'm going to do and worry about what are we going to do with the kids and worry about, you know, is everybody going to show up? Is everything going to work out? I'm just going to say, Lord, I give it to you. I give it to the Lord. And that's what my lesson is going to be about today. Because do you know what the preacher preached on yesterday? That is exactly what he preached on yesterday. We had a guy that writes all of the um, literature and stuff for, um, I'll get it right in a minute. Y'all, I can't even think. I'll tell you for this morning's over. But anyway, he preached last night. And because uh, our pastor is going on a, a camping trip with the kids, well, he was there yesterday morning, and he's going to come back I think, for Wednesday night. But we had a feeling last night. So let me find this verse, and then we'll get on our study. How's that? But I didn't even had my cup of coffee. look the doggone thing up y'all I'm so sorry I should be more prepared and I never have many of y'all watch me you know live because most people will come on and then they leave and they come on and then they leave because they see it's a Bible study and they don't want to be a part of a Bible study but let me look I gotta look this up right quick it's worth the wait I trust me it's worth the wait God is always worth the wait right and I am sorry, I know I should be more prepared, and I could have come on late and been more prepared, but I had a wild, wild night last night. So let's say, um, cast your care upon, I'm typing something wrong, casting all your care upon, maybe that's it, casting all your Well, there it is. It's 1 Peter. And I was looking in 2 Peter. I'm crazy. I was thinking, how can it just disappear like that? It is um, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. And it says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And he was telling us, um, let's see if I can pull this up right quick. And he was telling us how um, a lot of us don't really cast our care upon the Lord. We um, take it around with us. And um, he told us, you know, that he had studied the, the meaning of the words. And he told us the meaning of the words. And casting is actually like the only time, the only other time he said it was used in the Bible. I'm going to click the concordance. Is... Um, Yep, he's right. The only other time this word is used in the Bible, casting, is in Luke 19.35 when it says, And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they sat Jesus upon it. He says, when he says casting, he means actually taking, taking something and throwing it, throwing it away getting rid of it that's what that word casting means um so he you know he told us about that um now let's go back and it says all of course we know what all means don't we know what all means that means all but i can tell you what it means all things every um, individually, each, every, any, all, the whole, everyone, all things, and everything, all your care. Now, what does care mean? Do y'all know what care means? I don't know 
if I really knew the real meaning of this care until he told me. And um, I'm gonna drink a cup. Of, I'm gonna drink a drink of coffee. Hey Jennifer, I hope you're listening to the study, and I'm drinking coffee too. Okay, care. When God says, "cast," casting your care. Care means anxiety. Would you ever, ever would you have ever guessed that care, in this context? means anxiety. It says a distraction. Um, it doesn't say it right here, but he said that it meant anxiety in your worries. Okay. And we all think of things, and we all get anxious, and we all worry a little bit about some things, like this crazy TV show. I mean, I'm not going to lie. You lay there and you think, should I do that, or should I not do that? What about the kids? Should I leave my kids for three weeks? Should I not leave my kids for three weeks? Should I leave my mama for three weeks? Should I not? Uh, it's a big opportunity. Eddie says, heck yeah, let's go, and he's a pastor. He would have to leave his congregation but uh, maybe God can use us in a bigger way if we go out there and we're on a TV show and more people come to know who we are and might want to listen to our way of life and find out who God is. I mean, you just don't ever know. That's why you can't just pass it up. Um, so we have to look at, look at it on the right side. We have to take all the worries and the cares in our life even if they're little things, let me just say, God, everything's little to God, okay? Even if this seems big to me, it's little to God, because God is a big God. You know what I mean? God is the only God. God can do anything. So um, no matter what your cares are, no matter what your worries are, no matter what your anxiety is about, we are to cast it upon Him. Um, and there's so many times that we do not, just like... The song, uh, the uh, song, um, and he mentioned this last night, and this is one of my very favorite songs, and it was one of my granny's favorite songs, and it is um, not Jesus, Jesus. Let me think. What? Now I can't sing, but I'm gonna sing it anyway this morning. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sin and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And so many of us don't do that. We don't carry our worries and our thoughts and our cares to God. We don't give them to Him and walk away. And that's what we have to do in order to have a better life, you know? Because he can take care of it all. And we're just a measly little person here on the earth. And uh, this is just so exciting to me that the day that they contacted me, this was what the pastor had to say. And then I have to share something with you. It's actually on my doggone phone. How am I going to get it off? Um, well, I already said it. Dr. Stanley's message was that lots of times God brings us opportunities and lots of times we get worried and, and think that, you know, we shouldn't do it. And um, he does it to open doors and uh, make something bigger out of our life or use us in a more mightier way. And that we're not to ignore the doors that he opens. Now, am I saying Hollywood is biblical or God-like? Absolutely not. But do you know that God can use anything? He can use anybody he can use even the wicked for his ways if he chooses to open a door, if he chooses to um, reach somebody. Uh, all things are possible with God, right? So um, I just thought that was good this morning. Let's go through. We, we have casting. We have the definition of casting. We have all and we have the care. Now, let me tell you what careth me means, because it's a different word. 
it's a verb, and it says taking care, okay? For he careth for you. So that means that he'll take care of you. Now, E-T-H on the end of the word means he took, it's, it's like a present, uh, a past, and a future tense. It means that he will care for us today. He cared for us yesterday, and he will care for us tomorrow. He will always care for us, okay? So that just shows how alive he is, that he's not dead, right? Because he can careth for us. It says, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Now that care is a different meaning than the first one, okay? So the first care was our anxiety and our worries, and the second care is that he's going to take care of us, okay? So um, let's, let's do that today. I think we should, um, we should give him everything. You know, give him all of our worries, all of our cares. So many of us don't do that. So many of us go through our lives and we carry our own burdens and we carry our own anxiety and we have a heavy load or we got a lot on our plate. And we don't even ever think to, to we don't even ever think to say, God, you know what? That's a lot to do. How in the world am I gonna do that? Well, you know what? I'm just not even gonna worry about it. I'm gonna let you take care of that. Do you know that when I had cancer, when I had cancer, y'all, that was one of the most um, the biggest times in my life that I could have been worried. And I had a very, very aggressive cancer and was a stage what they call 3C, which barely doesn't exist anymore um, for breast cancer. There's a stage, most of the time, there's an A and a B. And the only time you're stage C with breast cancer is if it's in over 10 lymph nodes. So I was a stage 3C, and it was very likely that I would die within three years. Now, I'm still here, but do you know what? I didn't worry. I really didn't, y'all. I really, really didn't. I put all my trust and faith in God. I really did, and I told him, you got this, not you got healing me. I didn't pray for him to heal me. I prayed for his will to be done. I prayed that if, um, and I didn't even make him a promise. I didn't say, if you um, keep me alive and that I will do this or that for you. I didn't say that because we're not supposed to make promises like that when we don't know what our future holds. I don't think we're supposed to, I, I just don't think we should do that. Now, some of y'all might feel differently, but I just don't. I don't think I should tell God what I will do if he does something for me. Uh, I think that we should let God do what God does. Now, we are little minute pieces of this world, and so many of us think that God isn't who he is or God doesn't care just because something happens to us physically. And I'm like, for heaven's sakes, he's got the whole world in his hands. You know, why are we so selfish to think when he's got the whole world in his hands that we're so doggone important? And there are times when we could be important, but that's if we're letting him use us as a vessel and we're spreading his word or we're talking about him or we're saying good things about him. Then I could see uh, because then we're living through Christ, you know. But until then, I, I just told him, I just said, look, if you want to save me, save me. If you don't, then bring me to heaven. I mean, I, I sure don't mind going. I really don't mind dying, y'all. Not many people can say that. I know for sure, for sure, for sure I'm going to heaven. So I don't mind dying. It doesn't bother me a bit. It doesn't scare me. Um, but let's cast our care upon him so that we can be... Uh, at more ease, and we don't have worries and anxieties and stuff on our plate. We just give it to him. He's the big man. He's our daddy. He's our father. He's our savior. He's our um, groom. He's everything. So just give it to him. He can handle it. So I just hope and pray that if we decide to do this, and if they pick my family to be on that show, that... Um, 
it is God, what God would have me to do, and that uh, I go out there and, um, or we go out there, it's not an I thing, but we go out there, we do a good job, and I would love to win the money, but we don't have to, you know, but it would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, and I'm sure all of y'all would be rooting for me, and um, regardless, either way, I'm happy. I'm happy right where I'm at. I'm happy right in my house. Um, I'm happy if I never get on a TV show. Lord of mercy. I'm happy being with my husband and my kids. And uh, so, either way, you know, whatever. Uh, let's see if I want to say anything else about this verse. These are the different uh, verses that use care, not the care of casting, I mean, um, the worry and anxiety care, but the care where God actually does care for us, uh, like he wants to take care of us type of care. And some of them are when people use them, like, I know y'all know this story, it says, but Martha, when Martha was, it was Martha and Mary, remember the story, and and uh, Martha was the little busybody, and she was making sure everything was just right and cooking, and make sure all the food was prepared for all the guys and Jesus. And she comes to Jesus, and she says, uh, it says, but Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. That sounds like something I would say. It really does. I'm such a busybody. And it sounds like something I would say to Jesus when I wasn't paying him enough attention. And uh, now it doesn't have the rest of the story on here, but of course the Lord did not get on to Mary for sitting at his feet and listening to what he had to say. Because what he had to say was more important than serving those men. Okay. He was serving them bread of life while Martha was serving them bread they ate. And Martha didn't even realize it. And the reason she didn't realize it, y'all, is because she didn't slow down long enough to realize who Jesus was in the, in the messages he was bringing. She should have sat down right there next to Mary and listened because those men would have got to eat eventually, right? Um... That's one place that that same word care is used. Uh, it says the, let's see. I'm looking for another one that's good that y'all will know. Oh, here's a good one. It says, uh, it's Mark 4, 33, and it says, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, and that's Jesus. And he was asleep on a pillow, and they awaked him. And they say unto him, Master, carest not that we perish? He wanted to know, doesn't Jesus care that we're in this storm? Doesn't he care uh, the thing that he may doesn't he care that we're about to die? He's just laying here sleeping on a pillow. Well, he's God. And he knew they weren't going to die. Um, but that's just the word careth. I mean, it's the way we would think what careth would mean. So, you know, before when I read, cast your all, all your care upon him for he careth for you, I would think my cares, the things I cared about, like... I care about my kids or I care about um, the things I actually care about. Of course, the things that we care about are uh, can be our, our most major worries, right? Um, but now think of that verse as cast all your anxiety, cast all of your uh, care, your worries upon the Lord, for he careth for you, okay? 
Um, and then he also told us about the ETH. Remember that that is all the tenses, like the that's the present. It's the, it's the present. It's the it's the now. It's the yesterday, and it's the tomorrow. So remember when you see that on a word, that it's all the time. Um, let's see if I can try to think. Okay, here, here's one place where saveth is used. Okay, so it's God using, it, it's a present and the past and the future tense. And it says, then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. And he saveth them out of their distress. So what that says is that when we cry unto the Lord for our trouble, whether it, no matter when it is, because it's that tenth, tense word, E-T-H, he will saveth us, save us, and he continues to save us from our trouble. It's not something he used to do or that he did yesterday. It's something that he does all the time. He cares for us all the time. And he'll save us from our trouble all the time. Not just sometimes, not just one time, but every time, okay, if we ask, right? So um, I guess that's, let's see, I've been talking forever this morning. I've been talking 26 minutes. I guess I need to be quiet. But y'all, I just hope y'all have a good Monday. It is Monday, the starting of a new week. I hope that you help um us and those producers may I hope that you pray that the Lord is in it and that the right decision is made um, for us as a family on whether or not we should go and uh, and then that way I won't you know I'll just give it to God if I go I go and if I don't I don't right um, so let's say our prayers and thank him so much for being the good God that he is that he does care for us that he would say all of our cares, all of our worry, all of our anxi anxieties. Um, he could take care of them all. And, and remember that no matter what they are, no matter how big or small they may seem, they're all small to him anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for a new Monday, a new beautiful week. I pray for those kids at the kids' camp this week and our pastor and his wife and that you keep them safe. And all the crew there, Lord, I pray that they'd have a good week in you and that their little hearts learn about you and that they will learn things that they will remember for the rest of their lives and be able to take around with them as they go through the life that they will have when they grow up, which is so different than the life we have as children. Um, just um, be with us as a family. Be with the producers of this show on whether or not they choose our family um, and help me do the things I need to do to get it started if it's your will and only. Um, be with us as we go throughout our day and I just thank you so much for blessing us and uh, being a part of our lives each and every day through your son Jesus Christ that we have an opportunity to even talk to you Lord and because we know that we don't deserve it. And uh, we just thank you and praise you for everything you do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope you all have a blessed day. And uh, I think today I'm doing a Philly cheese on CBC. If you all get a, a chance to see it, I think I'll probably do it around lunchtime. And I'll just probably have an open face so it won't be quite as fattening. But it is a fattening lunch. So I have to be real careful and not eat too much during the day. We're having a vegetable plate for supper. But I was going to fry some okra out of the garden. So maybe we can do that, though. Love you. Bye. See you later. Bye.